Hi, I'm Adam. Hello, this is Jenny. And we're here for another podcast, this time on time and temporal uh, relationships. So let's dive right in. We'll use sigma as usual. So one thing maybe to start with is uh, time interval. Right. Okay. It's a unit, isn't it? Uh, it's not a unit, no. but it is a class. Okay. All right. So we have time interval is just any period of time. It could be one hour, ten hours, a thousand years. Uh, could start at any time of day and five minutes. Time. Could be five minutes. Anything. Okay. An another couple of interesting things we have are if we want to talk about uh, the immediate future. Yes. From some time interval, that's fairly typical to talk about. After I'm done writing this novel, I'm going to do something. Yes. Um, but maybe not to specify exactly how far in the future after that. So right. Sumo has a lot of features for saying just as little as you actually know about something. Because especially since human language is full of stuff like this, where we stay, say things that are lacking in precision. And we want to be able to express some of these things in a language that's very precise. Yes. And that means we say only that which we know to be true and no more. No okay. less and no more. And I notice it's a function. How are we going to use that? How are we going to use immediate future function? Okay, let's take a look at the definition of immediate future function. So it takes a time position as its first argument and it returns a time interval. So time position is either a point or an interval. Right? So we can talk about an instance of time and the immediate future after that point, or we can talk about a whole interval and the immediate future past that interval. Yes. Okay, and so it's returning some indefinite time interval in the immediate future of a particular point or interval of time. Okay. All right, so the way to use it um, in fact, we can see here, let's take a, find an example of immediate uh, future, let's, yeah, immediate future fun, okay. So let's look for a good use of it. That has immediate past, some of these are kind of difficult. Um, so basically we'd say the immediate future of some, like when fun, that's another good thing. Let's, let's take a little detour and look at when okay. fun. Because when fun allows us to convert from a process, not just a process, could right. also be the lifetime of an object. Yes. So could, it's any physical, anything with a position in space and time can be an argument to when fun. So it could be the when fun of Adam or the when fun of Jenny. That is the time interval of our entire existence, respective existences. Okay. Okay. So as well as you know the when fun of this podcast. Right. Is saying, you know, what are the temporal boundaries? What's the interval of this podcast? Right. Okay. So it helps us convert a thing that has a place in time to the time interval that it covers. Okay. All right. Because we have to, another very important thing that's especially tough for new sumo learners, and Jenny, you've been struggling with this yes. a little bit in learning, is uh, parameters and argument types. Yes. Right. Every relationship has argument types. Just, you know, if you're a programmer, this is kind of easy. You know, if you've done Java or any other type language, you know that arguments to a function or a relation uh, are going to have argument types, and you have to conform to those. Yes. Uh, if you're not used to that, or if you're used to sort of a more permissive programming language like old style BASIC or LISP, um, then uh, you may not be as used to argument type That's restrictions. That's true. Yeah. So. All right, so let's see. So we've got when fun that we just talked about. We talked a little bit about this immediate future fun. Uh, we talked about time intervals and time position. You know, we can also have uh, past, fun. past fun, the whole period of the past, the whole period of the future from right. a certain point in time leading out to infinity. Um, we can talk about uh, a time interval function, a time period function. Uh, a whole bunch of different uh, representational possibilities. Um, there's also lots of very conventional things. Like we yes. talk about the time interval of one hour. Right. Or the time interval of the class of all lunch times. Right. Uh, minutes or months. Um, 
here's some stuff that's that's fairly common. Uh, right. Begin fun and end fun. So if we have a time interval, what's the point that that time interval begins on okay. or ends on? Let's take a look at that. So begin fun takes a time interval and gives a time point, the time point at which it began. Right. Okay. So we can talk about intervals and points and convert between them. We can talk about things in the real world and get their temporal specification. Okay. Uh, let's do a little looking at uh, some calendar functions. Okay. okay. So year fun is good. Calendar. So you've used this one. Yes. Before. So year fun maps uh, an integer to the year that is expressed by that integer in the Gregorian calendar. Okay. Uh, at least I think you'd call it the Gregorian calendar, the modern Western calendar. Right. All right. So the year, year fun 1912. Uh, is the year 1912. Yes. Okay. Um, now, I should also say these things are compositional. Let's see if we can, I don't know if we can find a good example of it here. It would be nice if we had a, an instance we could point to. Yeah, here's a great case. Yes. Okay. So, because these things are compositional, year, right. month, day, uh, if we want to talk about the 20th of January 1930, right. we first say 1930, year right. fun 1930, and then pass that as an argument to the function month fun, right. which takes a month and a year to return right. a specific month in history or in the future. Right. Same thing with day fun. So year fun just takes one argument, month fun takes two, two arguments, a month, uh, a class of all months, and a particular year. Right. Day fun takes a three. Day fun takes a uh, an integer. Integer, right. And a second argument it only takes two arguments. Right. And it takes a particular instance of a month right. that is on a particular year. Right. Okay. We can be so specific. Yes. And That's you can do good. this for hours and minutes and milliseconds and so forth. All of this stuff is open to you. Right. Okay. So we can talk about particular days. Um, Let's see, we also talked about holidays a moment ago. Let me, let's just look at holidays. I think we have a few of these, since we're on the topic of calendar months. Uh, so we've got all sorts of holidays, Christian holidays, Jewish holidays, uh, uh, Muslim holidays. Let's look at some of the Christian ones. So Christmas Day, for example, yes. popular Western, Western holiday, very important one for many people. Um, and so this is the class of all Christmas days, and by custom, this occurs on the 25th of December. December. So Christmas Day is a subclass of uh, of all days, right? and it's a particular class of all the days that occur on the 25th of December. Right. And it's a fixed holiday, so we also have notions of holidays that are variable. Okay. Um, I think like uh, Thanksgiving is, doesn't always fall on the same day, Western right. Thanksgiving, and so forth. Okay, um, now let's see. Uh, another thing to talk about is we can talk about, let's see, we can talk about the time at which a process begins or ends. Yes. Right? And you've dealt with a lot of that, like, you know, John goes to the store at 2 o'clock. Yes. Um, but we also can want to talk about things that are true over a particular period. During during, or holds during, right? right? Holds during. So let's look at holds during. Now this is interesting, uh, you know, if you're doing inference, holds during is is a higher order logic, it's beyond first order logic, so you have to be a little careful if you're yes. using this in inference. Yes. You won't be able to do much with it in a conventional first order prover like E or Vampire. You'll have to use uh, one of these more experimental provers uh, like Satellax right. uh, or Leo2. Um, we'll have to do a separate podcast on that. That's quite a bit tougher. Um, so just be aware that there's some issues with doing logical inference in this stuff, but uh, the representation is, is uh, right. solid. Let's look at argument. Yeah. So holds during takes a time position and a formula. This is yes. the hard part, right? It's not just taking a conventional kind of argument. No. It's taking a whole logical formula. This can be a little tricky. All right. So if we want to say, for example, that... Uh, John has a blue car yes. in the year 2003, we'd say that it holds during 2003, the yeah. year, year fun 2003, the time position, a formula that, car. you know, there exists a car, 
John possesses that car, and the car has the attribute of being blue. Yes. Okay, and I think this was one of the exercises you did recently, yes. Jenny. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, um, so this, this is kind of an important thing, yeah, the difference between saying that a fact is true over a time period versus an event started or ended at a particular point in time. Right. Okay, and uh, let's see, I think that's about it for what I wanted to cover at the moment. Uh, Jenny, any questions or thoughts that you wanted no. to add? Yes, I would encourage uh, our audience to spend a bit more time browsing through Sigma and make good use of the graph and presentation. And it helps to give us uh, an idea of what's there in Sigma that we can use. Yeah, and just to reinforce maybe uh, what we did on graphs. So, so here's a graph of time interval, holiday, particular holidays, we can go down a couple of levels. It's a and nice way to get... And we have to, to get... click Submit, don't we? Yeah, you have to mm -hmm. click Submit or hit Enter on most browsers, and you get this whole list of holidays. And then you can actually drill in to see, for example, movable holiday, and don't you? You need to see how many. Yeah, so movable ten. holiday has 10, each of the, but this is the extent of it, right? right? Because each of these don't have any further subclasses according to this graph. Oh, that reminds me of another thing we could look at also, which is relevant. Um, so we have this whole class of uh, temporal relation. Okay. So we talked about a lot of these functions, future fun, immediate fun, minute fun, <laughs> year fun. Um, we also have all of these sorts of things. So there's a guy named uh, James Allen in 1980s that uh, had a very famous paper on time and temporal relations. He had yes. a calculus of 11 relations. We have all of that in Sumo. So it talks about uh, the relationship between time intervals or events um, right. without talking about the specific times at which they occur. And he uh -huh. came up with 11 of these things. So we have right. before, before equal, co-occurs, finishes. Right. Uh, so you can spend some time, uh, overlaps temporally. Uh, you could spend some time looking at uh, at these relations, and that's usually helpful. Yes. You'll, you'll need all, most of them at some point in time okay. when you're doing your representation. And and we should also kind of hint to a future podcast of spatial relation. Right. Um, there's a whole set of very extensive spatial relations that have similar things. We can talk about regions of space and yeah. whether they overlap or they are adjacent and all of that. So there's a nice analogy between the timeline and space. Yes, time and space. Yeah. Two dimension. Okay. Yes. Well, I think we'll we'll just uh, stop here. Hope this has been helpful, and yes. we'll talk to you later. Hope talk you enjoyed to you it. Talk you soon. Bye. Bye.